very good morning to all. First of all, really appreciate uh, your valuable time to join us. And I do hope you guys will learn and gain something throughout today's session. My name is Mikhailo, Inside Sales from Advanced Tech Major. Today, we'll be having a webinar, which the topic will be H2 Club Distributed Equipment Monitoring with Intelligent LT Gateway. Before we start the presentation, here is the agenda that we would like to go through. Where I'll be hosting the opening and starting with the introduction of Intelligent RT Gateway and its global successful story, followed by the implication of Intelligent RT Gateway with Advantech HLINX software, which will be presented by my colleague Zhu, Senior Solution Engineer from Advantech Malaysia. Therefore, a live demonstration will be also presented by my colleague Adli, Application Engineer from Advantech Malaysia as well. Without further ado, let us head to the introduction. According to the Oracle, the Internet of Things is described as the network of physical objects which link all the related devices with the purpose of their connection and exchange with each other over the Internet. The Internet of Things is no longer strange for most of us, as we live in an era where technology is advancing at an unprecedented rate, whereby the advanced technology not only brings us the convenience, but also in a rapid way to complete the task efficiently. According to the IoT analytics, recently they just released a research of global spending of enterprise IoT from 2019 to 2027, forecast during March 2022. The overall enterprise IoT spending grew about 22% in 2021 to 158 billion US dollars. This resulted in increasing demand from year to year and expected growth of around 22% projected from 22 and to 2027. Although the recently global market is hit by the supply and labor shortage, we believe the IoT will continue as a hot topic and upcoming more projects to be rolled out in the process. The RT analytics also listed out the impact of 16 macro factors on RT market from 2022 to 2027. They have forecasted which some of the factors that will bring either negative, positive, or no impact towards the markets throughout the years. Despite of various factors given in this table, we could see the technological portion, which cloud vendor focus on IoT and maturity connectivity is still bring positive towards the growth of markets. When we talk about IoT application, the gateway always acts as an important role among each devices and cloud, which help on the data collection and transfer purpose. Based on the order of digital or die, Nicholas Wind Passenger, it is said that the gateway requirement shops consists of high level of interpro interoperability, redundancy, connectivity, pre-processing of data, aggregation of data, remote control, and management. Furthermore, according to the global IoT market research done by research and market groups, the spending has reached to around USD 1.42 billion during 2021 and the market is forecasted to grow around 13.5%, which is USD 3.3 billion during 2027. Based on the studies from year 2019 to 2027, Advantech is glad to be one of the players in the IoT gateway market and serve the second place among the major players. Therefore, here is the IoT gateway which presented by Advantech, which serve as the bridges among each devices and cloud. Our intelligent IoT gateway will help to collect data from sensor, database, smart meter, PLC, machines, HMI, IO module, switches, and even data modules, and push those data to either private or public cloud. The IoT gateway comes with a wide application industry where it is suitable for solar system, 
wastewater management system, building management system, power and energy, oil and gas, and manufacturing plant as well. Now, let us move into the product introductions. Advanced Tech IoT Gateway ECU1051 is a compact, powerful, and high connectivity device. These devices come with a palm size of 92 times 30 times 93 millimeter, powered by TI Cortex A8 600 megahertz through 256 MB of RAM and the SD card slot for storage purpose. Besides, it also support two pieces of communication port and internet port each, and optional wireless communication of either Wi-Fi and LTE is supported as well. No input with 10 to 30 BDC and mounting method with either in wheel or wall mount. Comes to the software portion, our LT gateway is using Linux C as the operating system. It could support multiple protocols such as OBC UA, mobile TCP, RTU, DNP, Ethernet IP, and BACnet as well. For the data service portion, it is supported MQTT, REST API, and also lightweight M2N as well. In programming wise, it could support node read Python and also advanced phone configuration software easily. When it goes to the features, this LT gateway features an accelerated service and maintenance process. With the help of the advanced LT gateway, equipment status can be tracked easily. Users can track real-time data from equipment located anywhere in the field and then use the information to improve their business in a numerous way. Besides, it also supports advanced data publishing and backup capability for real-time monitoring. The ECU gateway enables serial and ethernet-based connection to database and ERP application. It independently acquires process and manufacturing data through a variety of interface and passing directly onwards to higher level management system. Furthermore, it is also provide platform scalability with distributed management and multi-service access. Unlike virtual machine access, ECU Gateway supports data access to a variety of cloud platforms to the standard MQTT protocol with distributed access control architecture for different environments. On the other hand, Advantech IoT Gateway also support advanced metering infrastructure to track power consumption. EMI expand the range of time-based programs that can offer to consumers. Smart systems such as energy management systems can make it easier for consumers to change behavior and reduce peak periods of power consumption. <laughs> Advantech ECU Gateway is currently have two models available which is ECU1051 and ECU1251. The main differences between both models are dimension, CPU, and number of communication port support. ECU1251 is featuring a more powerful processor and additional two pieces of communication port compared to ECU1051. We are also glad that it could be a part of Azure certified devices and Amazon partner devices as well. Now, let me just share about some global successful story of our advanced IoT gateway application. There will be five cases uh, sharing on upcoming slides. Case study one is regarding an elevator online monitoring system. Customer A have multiple elevators in their office building where one of the elevators break down. They found that it is time consuming to realize the problem and to fix it. Hence, we propose our IoT gateway to link to the elevator controller to generate data to their internal startup for monitoring and alarming purpose. Case study two will be on a cooling tower online monitoring system. Customer B is an oil and gas industry base. They have few cooling tower at a site serve as the purpose of cooling on some high temperature working machines. 
to avoid the cooling tower breakdown that might cause the risk towards the machines. We propose our IoT gateway, which connect to their machines to acquire the data and push it via lightweight M2M to customer private cloud with dashboard that designed by themselves for monitoring and alarming purpose. Case study three is interesting where it is an IoT energy management system on a grocery store, whereby customers see want to make sure their freezer and breaking pool is always in a good condition in order to serve fresh vegetables, fruits, and seafood to customers. Hence, we propose our IoT gateway in order to collect data from the temperature controller, freezer controller, power meter, and breeding pool controller to push those data to the existing AWS cloud. This application is not just only monitor the existing edge devices, but also able to study and conduct energy optimization as well. Case 4 is a real-time production management system. This is a factory-based customer with a production line available, whereas their aim is to have production management system with the avoidance of complex wiring and cost saving on the cable. Therefore, we implement our IoT gateway with Wi-Fi available to link with their machines that come with Wi-Fi built-in to collect and push the data straight to the SCADA MES system with real-time productions and machine availability management. Case 5, as well as the last case study and sharing is a gearbox remote monitoring system. This customer is a wastewater treatment plant where they have multiple gearbox and model for water pumping application. To avoid the breakdown of the gearbox that could bring the operation down, customers need to ensure they are always in the priority of awareness. Hence, we propose our IoT gateway along with our RTD IO module, as well as to collect the gearbox bearing and oil temperature oil level and push the data via MTPD to, to customer assisting Azure Cloud for monitoring purpose. Abatec IoT Gateway is a convenience product that it connects the edge devices and cloud seamlessly. To make sure the seamless connection, Advantech did come out with a simple and easy to use software that pair with this gateway together, which is called Wise HLink. I will let my colleague Zhu to share you more details on this software as well as how it works together with the IoT gateway. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. So thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Lo, for the introduction and also uh, share about my, the successful cases for the Watch Edge link itself. So uh, next, I will uh, explain more about uh, the software itself, okay? Uh, pertaining to the what we can use for the distributed equipment monitoring with our IoT intelligent gateway itself. Without further ado, uh, let me start. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is Wise Edge Link itself? Okay, so for Wise Edge Link, uh, it is actually a gateway software, okay, uh, but uh, without the visualization, okay, and then it is a uh, light weight cross-platform is computing middleware and it's run on a Linux or SSL. Okay, so it uh, provide a industrial protocol for rapid collection from the devices itself. Okay, and also it's also support a multiple integration to a cloud platform and also the party system uh, with the help of this protocol itself. Okay, so for the watch edge link itself, uh, it cannot be purchased separately. Okay, you need to purchase our hardware, it will bundle together with the Wise Edge Link itself. So the current version, uh, the latest version is a 2.8.0. Okay, so you can download and try the software uh, using this uh, link itself. So next, I will show you why Wise Edge Link is a good thing uh, for you to implement and use for the distributed equipment monitoring. Okay, uh, the main two reasons that I really interested uh, with this software is first of all is the secure integration. Okay, uh, because mainly it has a security and also uh, the second one is a zero coding. Okay, means that you don't need to have any knowledge in the coding because our utility 
our software to configure the WASH edge link is very easy to use. Okay, so next part will be uh, the WASH edge link component. Okay, so for the uh, WASH edge link itself, okay, so uh, the things that you need to have is first of all, you need to have the devices. Okay, like what uh, Mr. Lowe already, Mr. Lowe already uh, presented before. Okay, you need to have the devices. Okay, it already bundled together with the uh, link software itself. Okay, and then uh, next is you need to have a laptop or PC. Okay, running on Windows. Okay, uh, mainly Windows Seven, Windows Ten, uh, Windows Server. Uh, why you need to have a uh, this laptop and PC running on Windows because you need to install the Ashling Studio. Okay, Ashling Studio is the utility for you to configure the project and then download it the project into the device. Okay, so the main thing that you need to have is the devices, uh, laptop, PC, we running on Windows to configure the project itself. Okay, so. Next one is for the distributed equipment monitoring. Okay, so there is a uh, three phases. Okay, uh, that you are going to go through in order for you to have a, a distributed equipment monitoring project. Okay, first of all is the IoT gateway connection. Uh, mainly, you want to get the data from the field devices. Okay, uh, for example, pump, inverters, hash vac, power generators. Okay. And then the second one is the application monitoring, whereby you already send the data from the field site through the IoT gateway to a cloud platform. Okay, inside the cloud platform, you will use the uh, data and then you will visualize it using a dashboard. Okay, and then the more advanced phase, the last phase is the analysis, whereby you do analysis and do some prediction. This is uh, will be based on what the cloud platform provided. Okay, so this is the step uh, that you are going to go through in order for you to achieve this distributed equipment monitoring. So uh, for this distributed equipment monitoring, so it has a three simple step for you to start your project. Okay, so the first of all is uh, for the data acquisition. Okay, the first step is data acquisition, means that you will collect the data from the field devices at site. Okay, and then it will pass it to the IT gateway whereby you will do the data processing, okay, uh, to be more uh, meaningful information. Then after that, you will publish, you will send the data to your uh, desired cloud. Okay, so this is the three main steps for you uh, in order to achieve uh, what you, the goal for the uh, monitoring itself. So first of all, we will go through um, uh, what's actually uh, overview itself, okay. So in here, uh, in the overview itself, the first step is the data acquisition. Okay, so for what's Ashling, okay, the first step we will get the data from the field devices itself, right? Okay, so for the what's Ashling, the main uh, uh, advantage that what's Ashling is have is uh, it has a uh, two hundred plus equipment drivers. So the most famous uh, PLCs in the market, for example, Siemens, uh, ABB, Schneider, Mitsubishi, Omron, we do support. Okay, so furthermore, uh, what you can do is you can do a system uh, tech monitor, which by you want to monitor the uh, what's actually devices itself. For example, the uh, PLC, the CPU consumption, the RAM consumption, you do have the option for it. Okay, so it also support. Uh, Industrial protocol, for example, Modbus, OPC UA, PACnet, Ethernet IP. Okay, and also some of the power industry protocol. So if you involve in the power industry uh, market, so you will know like IC one zero one, IC one zero three, one zero four, and the AP three. So this is mainly for the power uh, energy uh, industry itself. So it also uh, support uh, some of the uh, power meter or energy meter or smart meter protocol. For example, uh, DLT uh, 6.45207 or DLT 6.45109 or some of it is a one is one IEC uh, 6.2056-21. Okay, and also some of the power meter and emitter support this mod bus. Okay, so you can have a various kind of devices that you can read 
through only using our IoT gateway itself. So let me show you why I said before it doesn't require any coding. So for example, you want to read a parameter from your field devices, for example, from the power meter itself, for example. So in here, uh, the main step is just, first of all, we need to create the devices, for example, the power meters, and then we will choose the protocol that you use. For example, if the power meter is using a mod bus, so we'll choose a mod bus in here. Then after that, if the power meter is using, for example, a serial communication, so in here we will set the baud rate, okay, the setting of the serial. Okay, if it's uh, using a TCP connection, so you need to know the uh, IP address and also the port number. Then after that, create a new tag. Okay, so this is the parameter that we want to monitor. For example, we want to monitor the um, uh, voltage. Okay, so we will uh, put the address, the mobile address in here, give it a name, okay, and that's all. So that's why I said before, uh, the software itself is very easy to use. You doesn't require any programming. It's just a, uh, select uh, the option only and fill in the, the blank. So the next part is uh, data processing. So data processing, what we can do uh, first of all is uh, to translate uh, raw data before you publish. Okay. So example, okay, example, um, if you have a analog I/O module at the site, okay, and then it gives a signal, for example, a milliamp or voltage, and then you want to translate it to more meaningful uh, information. For example, the sensor is actually uh, temperature sensors, okay, and then it gives a milliamp volt, a milliamp uh, value. So you want to can convert it into a temperature. So you can use our scaling option, okay, to convert the analog value to uh, engineering value. Okay, we also do support a uh, calculation tag. Okay, calculation tag means that from the parameters that you uh, get from the site itself, from the field devices, then you want to do more, do a calculation. So you can uh, use our calculation tag to do a calculation. Okay, so user tag is uh, like an internal tag for you to use. Okay, so this is an example for the, the that uh, the tag scaling. So in here you can choose what are the scaling formula that you are going to use. So normally I will use uh, linear scale YMS plus B or scalify input high low to span. Okay. So this is the calculation tag. Okay. So in here you can use this is the example A plus B plus C. So if you have for example um, temperature one is A, temperature two is B, temperature three is C. So the calculation tag is equal to A plus B plus C. So you can have uh, this uh, formula itself. So we can have a lot of other things that you can do. For example, this uh, function and min max, average, trigono, conditional. So you can do a lot of other things uh, with the calculation tag. And for user tag is, like I mentioned before, it's a, what we call it, uh, internal tag that you can use, okay? Uh, mainly uh, for the set point. So uh, whenever uh, the device boot up, maybe you can create an initial value uh, for the analog or for the discrete. So it depends on you guys. So another thing is for the advanced data processing. Okay, for the what's edge link, okay, we have a more uh, useful uh, function itself. So first of all, it's a soft logic. Okay, soft logic is, kind of a, a logic program that you can configure and run inside the Ashling. okay? So it use a IC61131 uh, standard, okay? And then we use a KW Multiprot software to configure it. So later on, I will show you what is uh, IC61131. Then we also have a data log, okay? Means that uh, when you read the data from the field devices, it will store uh, the data inside the devices. Uh, micro SD card. So later on, I will show you why it's, why it's important to have a data log inside the device itself. And also, we have a notification. Uh, later on, I can show you why it's also uh, a good additional uh, features that you can have. So, okay, so this is the soft logic that I mentioned before. Okay, so it uses the IC61131 3 standard. So, IC61131. 31-3 uh, uh, standard is 
uh, it support uh, this uh, standard uh, programming language. Okay, so for example, uh, if you're familiar with the sequential function chart, you can use this one. If you're familiar with like a, a C program, you can use such a text. If you are from a PLC base, you can use a later program. Okay, all of this can run concurrently. It's not like your normal PLC, you can run only later, right? But if you're using a soft logic, okay, with this C IC C one one three one dash three, you can you you can run a later program and also you can run such attack at the same time. Okay, so uh, the development uh, software is free. Okay, it's free. You can uh, run it and you can configure it. Okay, and then it uses multi prop express. Okay, so if you want to configure the project inside this software, you don't need to create any like tag. Okay, you can directly import from the Hlink project that you have created. Okay, so no need to create any additional tag. You also can do offline simulation and online download to monitor the logic. Uh, it's same like a PLC. Normally, you can do online monitor to check the ladder uh, program itself. So next is the internal data logger. Okay, so uh, it's empowered by YHLink and also SQLite. It requires uh, micro SD. Okay, so when you read the data from the field devices, okay, the HLink will store the data to a micro SD card. Okay, so inside the utility also it will show uh, estimated required SD card for you uh, that you needed for your data logger. Okay, you also can. Uh, download the data log file okay using ftp or ssh or you can enable a usb backup means that when you go to the field site you don't have a laptop you want to extract the data from the uh, data log from the hlink device so you just plug in your usb drive into the usb port and then you wait for five minutes it will uh, upload the data log to your usb drive okay and why this uh, data logger is important okay first of all is because uh, you can have a data resume function for your cloud connection okay means that uh, normally you will send uh, data to the cloud using an internet right so not all of the site have a cable internet okay normally you will use a cellular network so in malaysia case itself uh, our cellular network is not really reliable sometimes it will disconnect okay so that's why with the uh, data resume function you it will it will able to send the uh, data whenever there is a loss of connection okay by the help of data log uh, same goes to sql ftp data backup later on i will show you why sql ftp data backup so this is how you con you configure the data log okay so first of all you enable okay and then in the log type here, you can choose uh, between periodic, periodic storage or on value change. Okay, periodic storage means that uh, it will log the data every period that you set. For example, this is one second. Every one second, it will log the data. On value change is uh, if there is a changes in value for your tag. For example, system uptime, there is a change of value, it will store. If there is no change of value, it will not store. So it will save your uh, memory space inside the micro SD. So this is the feature that you can estimate how many space that you need in the micro SD card. So for example, uh, I add a few of the tag here. I log every one second. Okay. And then we show it require 1.6 GB. Okay. So this is data logger. So next is the data to cloud connection. Okay. So in here, uh, we support a uh, major cloud platform, example, Azure, okay, um, Alibaba, uh, Google Cloud, okay, our own uh, WisePass, okay, and also, for example, MySphere by Simon and a lot of others. Okay, we also uh, support a data resume function if you enable data log. Okay, so you also can use a custom MQTT connection to have a more fle flexibility later on. I will show you why you will need custom MQTT. Okay, so this is the example uh, for the cloud connection setting for Azure. So like I mentioned before, our Hlink, you don't need to do any programming. Okay, you just fill in the information only. Okay, 
Okay, for Azure, uh, you need to copy the connection string uh, from the IoT Hub to here, and then we will just uh, choose the tag that you want to upload. Okay, and then you can set the periodic publish. For example, this one, I upload the data to Azure every one minute. Okay, you also can uh, have a different publish when it means that if there is a changes of value, we will publish. Okay, so this is the enable data resume. So if you enable this one, it will uh, upload the data whenever there is uh, after loss of connection, loss of internet connection. So if you have uh, your own cloud, okay, if you have uh, your own cloud and then it's not supported uh, by our listed cloud platform that we list, I listed before, you can use simple MQTT. Uh, but only if your cloud using MQTT, okay? So in here, uh, we can upload the data to your cloud using MQTT, okay? So this is simple MQTT, you can, so simple MQTT, all of the data topic and also the payload is fixed, okay? Uh, by our own uh, template itself. So if you want to have more flexibility, means that you want to change the payload, Okay, the payload format you want to change. So you will use the custom MQTT. So in the custom MQTT here, you can define your own payload. Okay, the, how the template, the, the format itself, so you can uh, create your own. Okay, so this is the macro function uh, that it has. For example, you want to add the tag name here and also the timestamp, tag value. So this is uh, why you will need a custom MQTT. Okay, because for the simple MQTT before, the payload is fixed, you cannot change. And sometimes uh, your cloud platform uh, cannot understand the payload. So you need to have a very specific payload. So that's why you will use a custom MQTT. So the other features that you can have is first of all is data backup. Okay, so example, uh, if your cloud is not uh, using uh, MQTT connection, maybe you have a, um, what we call it, SQL Server in the cloud platform. Okay, so you can use the edge link. Okay, and then you can send, upload the data to your SQL Server or Oracle Server uh, somewhere in the cloud or in your physical server. Okay, so you also can uh, upload to the FTP server. Okay, if your cloud or your platform using FTP server. So data backup to this uh, database. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, you need to know the IP or domain name of the SQL Server, the port number, database. Okay, if there is a uh, credential that you need to log in to the SQL Server, so you need to fill in. Okay, and then for the uh, data backup to the database, we use a batch upload. Okay, means that uh, until it has a 500 row of data, then it will upload. Okay, this is to uh, reduce the connection uh, to the database and also to reduce the um, or equal it internet uh, quota itself. And then you can upload up to four database at one time. Okay, the maximum is four database. So this is for FTP server. Okay, it's the same as the database itself. So you need to know the IP domain, port number, the login. So the next is the notification. So even notification, okay, so means that um, it's some kind of a alarm system in the edge link itself, okay. So uh, example, if you have a devices at site and then you measuring the temperature, okay. So if the temperature exceed several, maybe for example, 100 degrees Celsius, you want to send a notification. So you can use our uh, alarm event manager is here. So in here, we will choose, for example, tag name, maybe temperature one, high limit, 100. Okay, so if it's above 100, it will trigger this event. For example, you can send SMS or send email. So send email, you need to have internet access. Okay, send SMS, you need to have a 4G card and also SIM card that can send SMS. So, and after that, you can define what message you want to uh, put in here. Okay, so this is a event, uh, event manager. 
Uh, next crucial thing for IoT gateway is the security. So because you put the devices outside and then you transfer the, the important information through the internet, right? So first of all, um, authentication, okay? Uh, first of all, it's a web service, lah, okay? Uh, the actually itself have the web service means that you can log in to the device IP address through the browser to online monitor the tag or the system log okay so it use a uh, https okay to have a more secure connection whenever you want to log into the web server okay you need to key in the username and password so there's another thing uh, for the security okay for the configuration of the project okay you can have a user and password login okay and then project configuration of is uh, encrypted okay and then after that, transmission, transmission to the cloud or to the database or to your uh, software itself. So we can support like a VPN connection, okay, to have a more secure uh, connection to your platform itself. So we can cover the security by using uh, these few features. So next is for the gateway remote management. Okay, so example, you say that you have a uh, 500 devices scattered all around the world. And then it's very far for you to configure the device. Okay, you need to go to the site, okay? And then you have a thousand or hundreds of devices. So how to remotely configure the project? So in here, we support VPN, right? So through the VPN, okay, you can configure the edge link devices, okay, from your home or from your office itself. Okay, so you can remotely, uh, Download the project, okay. Upload the firmware update, okay. Or uh, check the, for example, the um, the soft logic also you can configure, okay, by using the VPN. So we do support like uh, Open VPN, Tendelion VPN, our own Avantec VPN, and Ashling VPN. So this is the main function that you can have, okay, if you're using Ashling with VPN. So this is the example, okay, example, uh, if you want to uh, monitor, remote monitor your, for example, uh, mobile power generator, okay, mobile genset. So in here, I will go through what are the steps and what are the information that you need to have, okay, before you carry on the project. So this project, the, the, the requirement is uh, they want to monitor a few parameters from the genset. Okay, send the data to uh, cloud, which is our Wi-Pass cloud, through a 4G network. Okay, and then they want to visualize this in the dashboard. Okay. So remember our three step. Okay, data acquisition, data processing, data to cloud. Okay, so we go first uh, data acquisition. So data acquisition, remember we want to get the data from the field devices. Okay, so first of all, what you need to uh, check is what are the communication protocol that the field devices use. Okay, uh, for example, maybe it support Mobus or PCUA or some other uh, protocol. So that's what we need to check. Then after that, what are the communication interface that the protocol use? Okay, sometimes they use a serial, sometimes they use an internet base. So you need to check. So for the uh, communication interface, uh, you need to know the setting. For example, serial, you need to know the baud rate. Data bit, parity bit, store bit. Okay, for the internet, you need to know the IP address and the port number that they use. Okay, the next part is the memory address that you want to read. Okay, for example, uh, mobile genset, maybe the um, power consumption. Okay, so you need to know the addresses that is belong to uh, power consumption. Okay, so in here is the example for the mobus. So this is the mobus address, and then is belong to temperature. Uh, so if you want to configure the edge link, if you want to read for the temperature, you need to put in this address 40001. Okay. So this is example for the mob bus. So this is the information that you needed. Okay. Uh, before you configuring the edge link. Next is the data processing. Okay. To process them for the more meaningful data. So in here, the step is very easy. Okay. First of all, uh, this is how you configure the edge link, by the way. 
So add the node, basically add the HLink devices in here. If you're using EC1051, you put EC0051. And then if your devi field devices is using a serial, so we add a serial port. Okay, configure the serial setting. And then we add the device. If this real the field device is using a mobile, so we'll choose the drivers and the uh, port numbers. And then step four is add the tag. If you want to, example, read the temperature, and then the mobile address is 4001. So this is where you will create at the tag. So if you want to have more uh, function, for example, uh, enable the calculation tag, user tag, IC10, uh, the, the soft logic, so you can put more uh, function in here. Then after that, the last thing you need to do is to, to download the project to the devices. Okay, everything is just uh, fill in the information only, doesn't require any coding itself. And then the last is a data to cloud connection. Okay, so this is where you will fill in your uh, cloud information inside the wise link. So you need to find information on how to connect to your desired cloud platform. Okay, for Azure, uh, AWS, we do have uh, the guide for you uh, on how to uh, do the connection. So for our wi uh, there are several uh, information that uh, we need to know, for example, the m broker domain name, okay, and then the broker login, the port number, and also the credential. So different cloud will need to have a different information. Uh, so that's why uh, you need to know what are the information needed and where to find in the cloud itself. So inside the Ashling uh, Studio, you just need to enable the m service, fill in the information, and then download the project. So this is the step that you need to do in order for you to fulfill uh, the remote monitoring project itself. So it's very simple. I can say within two to three hours, you can uh, finish uh, the configuration itself for the beginner. So it's very easy. So that's only for my side. Okay, uh, I will pass to uh, Adli to demo uh, the Ashling software itself and also our demo. Hello, hello. Okay, uh, thanks to my colleague Zor and Piccolo. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Adli Kwan, an application, application engineer from Avantech Malaysia. Okay, so today I would like to introduce you guys to our Avantech IoT Gateway solution with the uh, demonstration video. Okay, so first of all, Avantech IoT Gateway is a compact, powerful, and also high connectivity devices for IoT application. And when we talk about IoT gateways, some of us or most of us already know or thinking about Node-RED. For those who didn't know, Node-RED is a programming tool for wiring the hardware devices, APIs and online services uh, together. However, uh, the user need to have a basic programming knowledge to use Node-RED compared to our Avantech IoT gateway. Okay, and on top of that, when it comes to a complicated uh, application, Node-RED is required more effort to integrate Node-RED into the application. Okay, so therefore, Avantech come out a bundle of software plus IoT gateway, which is much more convenient to configure and integrate. Before we go to the live demo demonstration, let me explain a little bit about this demo architecture. With the bundle of our software, Ashling and IoT Gateway, we have come out a demo as architecture show. Avantech IoT Gateway is much flexible that it could support various protocol such as Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, Omron Hosting, OPC UA, Bagnet and etc. For the architecture, we have Omron EC55 temperature controller, Omron PLC CP1E, and Avantech IO module at the bottom side. When it comes to the middle side, we have Ethernet switch to extend the connectivity of IO module. On top of, on top of those device, we will have Avantech IoT gateway, which is EC1051 to bridge all the data from the bottom side to the cloud. Okay, from this demo, we will collect the data 
such as temperature, digital I.O. from PLC and Adam I.O. Module 1, and also analog I.O. from Adam I.O. Module 2. Okay. After data is collected, we will push the data to Avantech WisePass dashboard for cloud monitoring purpose. Okay, let's watch the demo video to let you get a better picture of the product. Hello, I am Adli. I am application engineer from Avantech Malaysia. Okay, so today I will introduce the live demo of Avantech IoT Gateway with Ashley Software. At here, we have push button to trigger digital signal to Adam I.O. module. Same goes to the push button below, which will trigger digital signal to Omron PLC. Next, we have thermocouple to read the temperature to Omron temperature controller. Then, this is the voltage regulator that will give analog signal to Adam I.O. module. Before we go to the configuration part, make sure all the devices is connected to our IoT gateway which is ECU1051. To fully integrate all these edge devices to the cloud, we need to configure it using our Avantech Edge Link Studio. To configure the IoT gateway, which is the EC1051 you need to download and install the utility that we call Advantech Ashling Studio so here is the Advantech Ashling Studio so all the configuration will need to do it here okay so for this case I already done the configuration as you can see here for COM1 I already integrate with Omron CP1 EPLC through hosting protocol. And for COM2, I'm using Modbus RTU to integrate with Omron E5CC, which is the temperature controller. And then for the TCP port, I'm using Modbus TCP to integrate with our Adam I.O. module okay after I collect all the data in here in this in this Ashling how I want to push the data to the cloud so for this case I'm using Advantech WisePass Data Hub so the configuration already done and the text already add into this section which is the data that I want to collect to the cloud. In the network setting, I already set for LAN 1 into fixed IP and for LAN 2, I let it THCP for me to get internet access. Okay, after done the configuration you need to download the project into the EC1051 or any Ashling devices okay after the downloading is done then let's move to the dashboard here is our WestPass dashboard that I have created before okay so WestPass dashboard is a cloud solution from Avantech so as you can see here at the center part 
we can see the advantage IoT gateway status so you can monitor the percentage of CPU use the percentage of the memory use and the system capacity at this side we have the Adam IO status so currently the Adam IO status is running and no alarm status and for this side we have the Omron PLC status that currently is running and also have no alarm status and if you go to the bottom side we have the analog signal from Adam IO and at this side we have the temperature from Omron temperature controller okay for demonstration if you can see when I push this alarm button it will trigger and it will shown in the dashboard same goes if I push the alarm button for PLC it will show the alarm status in the dashboard when goes to the voltage regulator I will increase the voltage and it will shown on the dashboard for the temperature as you can see in the at the temperature controller the temperature is 25 celsius so the dashboard will show 25 celsius here is the end of the live demonstration thanks for watching that's all from my part I will pass back uh, the floor to my colleague, Pikilo. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Adi, for the presentation and also you as well. Before we head into the Q&A session, let me have a quick introduction of our Advantech IoT Academy. Advantech IoT Academy is a learning platform that provides IoT knowledge. We offer various courses, which including IoT general knowledge, product features, hands-on training, and troubleshooting as well. So you can easily search Advantech IoT Academy on the Google. Just uh, click the keyword, and then you'll find the first one and click it into it. Besides that, you can also search the courses that you are interested in through keywords too. For example, uh, Wiki Hlink, and you'll find there's three courses available for Hlink which you can go into it and then learn and get a certification. Feel free to register and explore our diverse range of online courses. Thank you. We are having a promotion, which is uh, ongoing with this webinar to ensure that customer can actually learn something from here and also buy uh, from our site uh, in a very quick way. So in here, we do provide a promotion for ECU12. 1051 and ECU 1251. So both units will be equipped with a 16 gig uh, storage. And the price for ECU 1051 currently is the promotion price, which is about 830. And let's say if you need uh, Wi Fi, and we'll be having the price of uh, 1.0 and 30k uh, for the Wi Fi version. And this unit, we do have X stock, which prior to sales. And following by, by the EC1251, we are currently having a promotional price which is about 1.450k uh, and another uh, Wi Fi version which is uh, 1.65k, which also we are having a uh, stock for this uh, unit as well. So the price uh, for this quoted unit is including delivery within uh, Malaysia, which uh, this promotion we are we actually uh, specialized for Malaysia customers. So the stock availability is prior to sales and the promotional period will be about one month, which is starting today uh, to the uh, 24th of next month and terms and conditions apply. So let's say if you're interested, please scan this QR for more inquiry or contact your sales uh, accordingly. I'll leave this page over here for you to have a view. And then uh, let's say if you're really interested, please uh, scan 
is queued up for further inquiry. Thank you. Thank you for your participation and also your listening.